Hi, this is Dr. Nagy from the Nagy Orthodontic Academy. Um, we are just going to review this case that uh, a lot of people had questions about. This is just a case from a forum. Uh, <clears throat> it's not my case, but it's a typical case that you often see. Uh, if you look at the CEPH, and this is why it's important to take a CEPH uh, to evaluate the proclination, you see um, a relatively proclined lower teeth and a very proclined upper teeth. And you, you know, you can um, assess uh, proclination by several different methods. One is, you know, look at the interincisal angle, uh, which doesn't tell you which teeth are proclined, but it gives you an idea. 120 to 130 degrees is normal, and that would um, <clears throat> show uh, normal uh, uh, proclination for the upper and lower. Uh, smaller, de smaller than 125, 130 degrees would be proclined teeth. A larger degree would be uh, teeth that are upright. If you look at this, um, this is probably about maybe 110. Um, if you look at it, maybe uh, somewhere around there. So these teeth definitely look proclined, especially the upper and lower teeth as well. Now, if you look at the lower arch, you see um, pretty severe crowding here. And that's something that's going to be really the determining factor. If you look at um, this side here, you got uh, two millimeters of space, but you got a blocked out canine on both sides. So there's easily five millimeters of crowding here. Probably another one or two here that's about a, a six, seven, and another five here that's about a 12. So even uh, just on the lower arch, we have about a 12 millimeters of crowding. Now we do know that for each uh, two millimeters of crowding, we got about one millimeter of advancement approximately of the, of the teeth. So um, <clears throat> with 12 millimeters of crowding, we were, even if we do a low IPR between the teeth, let's say we can get uh, 12 millimeter down to 10, um, we still have 10 divided by 2, that's 5 millimeters of proclination of the lower teeth. That's really going to push out these teeth, and they're already starting proclined. So these teeth are going to be severely proclined uh, if you treated this case non-extraction, ex at least on the lower arch. And we're just looking at the lower arch in the CEPH right now. So just by looking at this case, you already know this is not going to be a good case to treat non-extraction because there is too much proclination on the lower arch, and you can tell that from the CEPH, and there is too much severe crowding here. So just from the get-go, you can uh, already decide that this case is going to have to be um, treated with some form of extractions on the lower arch just to make a good lower arch because otherwise you just end up with a huge proclined lower teeth. You're going to push this tooth out through the bone once you put in your 19 by 25 or 21 by 25 uh, stainless steel wire. So this is how I would go about, you know, just uh, looking at uh, looking at these proclined cases with uh, crowding. Again, you have to make sure that you make a good lower arch um, in your treatment. Uh, um, and, uh, you know, the, this case would be very difficult to make a, a good lower arch without extractions. Um, and the other thing you can look at is look at the deep cover P here. So if you look at this patient, the other thing that's going to add to your proclination, not just the crowding, but also this case has a very deep curve of speed. So once you, uh, once you add the curve of speed advancement, because once you level this curve of speed, these lower teeth will further procline. So I think this is going to be a case that you're going to have to treat with an extraction. But I just wanted to show you guys the reasoning and how you go about doing this and, and um, um, you know, just to um, get some help of, um, uh, you know, how you diagnose a case and uh, you really, what are the things that you look at first. So uh, when you're diagnosing a case, I would definitely look at your interincisal angle. I would look at the proclination of the upper teeth, proclination of the lower teeth, and I would really focus on evaluating the crowding on the lower arch and I would take all that into consideration and look at how much those teeth are going to procline in advance with non-extraction and then what would happen if you treated the case with extraction. Uh, I hope this helps um, and if you have any questions welcome to send me an email or look us up in one of our upcoming seminars, um, either our one-day seminars or we have the two-year mini residency and uh, hopefully um, this helped you uh, with uh, diagnosing and treatment planning your cases. Have a good rest of the day. Bye.